standing on holy ground. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and all God's children, talk three times. <laughs> Even though 
they've read through the Gospels, they still refer to the cross as a tree, and we hear that again um, in John 6, 51. I'm going to begin in verse 50, though, as it says, this is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that, it, that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. And how does that relate to the cross? Uh, so the scholars um, in Genesis took the meaning of God's body and the hope that we get from God's body through communion uh, relates back to Adam and Eve when they were in the garden. And, and God said, eat of this tree. It is the tree of wisdom and, and of hope. And, and this is where you will find everything that is good. And, and well, we know how it turns out. That tree of wisdom was great, but that tree of the naughtiness seemed a little bit better. So um, that's a different story. But in, um, in John, we see where bread, the body of our Lord, is the hope. Just as they saw the tree of life as hope. And so they look at Jesus' uh, Last Supper as the beginning of the hope that came um, from the tree, the tree of, hope, of life, hope, and wisdom. And um, in Genesis, we hear in Genesis 3.22, Genesis 3.22, we see that it says, Then the Lord God said, See, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. Now he might reach out his hand and take also from this tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord of God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to fill the ground from which he was taken. And that is where... Um, writer of Acts saw how the tree of life is Christ, foretold way back over 2,000 years ago um, at the beginning with Genesis. And I just think that that is, that is amazing, um, that we can look back that far from the very beginning of who we became to see how one day Jesus was going to be our hope, even through his death, death on a cross. Um, another book, now this one does come out of the Apocrypha, and it is out of the Book of Wisdom. And um, I will be reading Wisdom, chapter 14, verses 6 and 7. That explains more use of wood and what how that works into the cross also. So wisdom 14 verses 6 and 7. For even in the beginning, when arrogant giants were perishing, the hope of the world took refuge on a raft, and guided by your hand, left to the world the seed of a new generation. For blessed is the wood by what righteousness comes and what that is is that the writer of wisdom um, he he is comparing the raft to the ark um, and the whole Noah story and um, so the wood that he's talking about here is the wood that built the ark that kept our our life going on by the flood and um, and to bring that back into a book that we rarely, rarely get to read um, and see how how wood is just uh, it's important and it's it's not just important because it becomes the cross as we get closer into the New Testament 
but it's it's wood that that it, that will save us just as our ancestors were saved by the ark and just as creation was saved by the ark made of wood which was our hope which was our life from generation on from generation on and i just think that's cool and maybe because i'm a pastor i want to be a bible nerd sometimes um, And for our hope into the world. And 
that is just a great parallel of, of the Old Testament bringing us into the New Testament. And, and we hear in Exodus 15, verses 23 and 24, um, the Israelites are out of Egypt, and they have crossed into the Red Sea, and their journey for 40 years is beginning. And, um, and as we know, uh, the Israelites are being naughty already, and they just barely got out of the Red Sea. And they're complaining because there's no water, there's no water. And where they have landed is in a place that's name is called Bitter, because the water there is bitter, and they can't drink it. So hear these words um, out of Exodus. Then Moses ordered Israel to set out from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went, there, they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the water because it was bitter, which is why it was called Marah. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. The water became drinkable. The water was now able to be consumed so that life could be, go on. We cannot live without water. And so life-giving water was given to them way back in Exodus. And it's the same when we bring our children and our adults to baptism. It's life-giving water made sweet by what? Wood. Of all things, wood. And, and in Sirach 38.5, which is also another book out of the Apocrypha, it reads, Was not water made sweet with a tree in order that his power might be known? So there we again see how important that piece of Exodus was that uh, even hundreds of years after Exodus was written, uh, Ben Sirach of Jerusalem, who was a Jewish scribe who wrote the book of Sirach, remembers and continues to bring that story forward that even though the water was bitter through wood, the water became sweet. And our final reading this morning comes out of 1 Corinthians uh, of hope leads us to this. 
this doorway. Enter our hearts this day as we share our joys and concerns in prayer and in the actions and service that will follow. We lift before you the firefighters and their families, all your children who are in recovery from storms, and all who may be in pathways of tropical storms and hurricanes. Be with them, be with the utility workers as they try desperately to get into these communities to restore power, which will restore their water systems, which will give them life. And Lord, we lift these, your children, up to you. Irene and Charles, Shelley and Galen and Janet, Shirley, Vicki, Sharon, Aaron, Marissa, Jan, Andy, Mike and Kent and Grace, Bill and Larry, Patty, Keith, Viola, Sean and Jamie, Rick and Pam, Terry, Kristen, Carl and Joe, Donna and Chris, Trudy and Dan, Amanda and Peter, Russ and Linda, and those names that remain on our hearts and for situations too difficult to give words to. Help us to be the people who can bring this peace to them as our lives have encountered difficulties and concerns. So too are we blessed with great joys. We celebrate moments of happiness and wonder, and we lift up joys in celebrations from this congregation this morning. Lord, bless all whom we have named before you in our hearts and with our voices. Touch each life with blessings and peace and mercy. Give us strength and empower us for the ministries of reconciliation. For it is in your name that we pray, and all God's children honk twice. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share that peace with our brothers and sisters through one honk. Our offering this morning is um, you. I want you to be an offering this week. Make someone smile or make someone laugh, especially in these times. Perhaps you can be a listener or perhaps you can be an advisor. Maybe a, a plate of brownies would lead to catching up with an old friend, socially distanced, of course. But be an offering this week. See how you can fill the hole in someone's life, whether it's something as small as collecting their mail or getting their grocery list when you go to the market, uh, whether it's just knocking on their door and, and giving them a wave and a smile. Be that blessing this week. Um, you will be blessed as well as the person who you have shared your That's what I want you to offer this week. And of course, our offertory hymn, the doxology, is found in our bulletin. Please speak these words with me. Praise, Praise God, God from, from whom all blessings flow. Praise, Praise him, him all creatures here, here below. below. Praise, Praise him above, above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, Son and Holy Ghost. And all God's cars honk twice. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord of all mercy and compassion, bless these gifts lovingly offered and all the people here. Help us to use these gifts for ministries of hope through our church and into our community, our nation, and the world. And all God's children honk twice. <laughs> called you and placed his trust in you. Go into this world bearing the words of hope and healing. Reach out to others in compassion, for it is in Jesus' name that you are sent to go and serve. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all God's children, 
honk twice. Um, this morning, uh, if you need raffle tickets still for um, our raffle of the ground beef, please see me as you depart um, out of our departure driveway. Um, again, the tickets are $5 a piece or three for 10. Um, and the raffle will be held on the 20th following worship. Um, the book club book is at the library if you'd like to pick it up. And the book club itself will meet at the library on the 17th at 10 o'clock. And um, yeah, you can socially distance and enjoy some time with your sisters in Christ. On our list of announcements of people who it would be lovely if you could um, send cards or a phone call or um, however you connect with people, we have jo Joyce Rosemeyer on the list for Alpine. Uh, she, uh, I was told she used to be a member here, and so many of you probably remember her. And so she is at Alpine. If you would um, like to give her. Um, a uh, a letter. Uh, oh yeah, and I'm supposed to tell you this because I promised the people there I would. All right. Um, this is a public service announcement from uh, Nebraska something. Sorry, I remember. <laughs> uh, anyhow, here it is. Feeling overwhelmed, fear, anger, sadness, irritable, excessive drinking or drug use concern um, among many others. Do you need someone to talk to? If so, call, call, free and confidential, Niobrara, no, sorry, Nebraska Rural Response Hotline, and the number is in your bulletin, or the Nebraska Family Helpline, which apparently is, uh, is one of these is all the time 24 7 and one of them isn't and i think it's the rural rural response that's 24 7 um that's why i have just that number i guess so seriously if there is something that is just too much and it's three o'clock in the morning and 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 you are just you are done you are spent and you need a voice or an ear please i encourage you to um, call this number, 1-800-464-0258. It, it's nothing to be ashamed of. To need somebody to, to speak with. Uh, I think that's a lovely thing to, to do for yourself. Um, we received from Adam Decay a thank you uh, for the quilt that was presented to him at his graduation and it reads Faith United thank you for the quilt that I will bring to college with me it is nice and comforting I gave it a few test runs thank you for being my second family and always being there Adam so um, yeah uh, he was he was very pleased to receive that quilt so Thank you, um, peacemakers and quilters, and um, and all of Face United for always remembering our children. Um, is there anything else that needs to come before this family of believers before we depart? If so, stick your hand out the window, and I will. Alberta. Mike Tiki has called from Florida, and he wants you all to know that he is a crazy God, because we know what 